Hello everyone, my name is Ankit Varma and today we are learning Support Vector Machine. This is also called SVM. Support Vector Machine is Supervised Learning Algorithm. In Supervised Learning, we have knowledge of Input, Output, we have Label Data and we have a Trainer. Support Vector Machine identify Optimal Hyperplane. Here in the diagram, we are having x-axis and the y-axis. We have the blue objects which belong to class A. And we have orange objects which belong to class B. There are some key concepts in SVM. The first is hyperplane. This is also called decision boundary. It is also named as Decision Plane, Decision Space. Hyperplane or Decision Boundary separate data points into different classes. So these are the different data points which we have to divide into different classes. For two-dimensional space, hyperplane will be a line. Line is one dimension. For three-dimension space, Hyperplane will be a plane, which is two dimension. Here in the diagram, we are having X and Y axis. So we are dealing with two dimension space. So here, hyperplane will be a line. There are multiple ways to put the hyperplane. In case one, we are having a hyperplane or a decision boundary. To draw this hyperplane, we need support vectors. So next key concept is support vectors. Support vectors are data points of each class which are closest to hyperplane. So from the class A, this data point or the node is nearby hyperplane. And from the class B, this data point or node is nearby hyperplane. So these are the support vectors. With the help of these support vectors, we can draw the dotted line. The average of these two dotted line create the hyperplane or decision boundary. To identify the optimal hyperplane, we need to check its margin. So next key concept is margin. It is also called gap. Margin is a distance between hyperplane and support vectors. In the diagram, these two are support vectors and this is hyperplane. So distance between them is called margin. This margin must be large so that we can easily separate class A with class B. So large margin is good and small margin is bad. We need to check multiple cases and in each case we have to find the margin. Wherever the margin is large that will be good and that will be considered as optimal hyperplane. Now we are taking the case 2. In case 2 we are taking another hyperplane and with the help of support vectors, we are drawing these dotted lines. The average of these dotted lines is hyperplane or decision boundary and the distance between support vectors and hyperplane is margin. This margin is even lesser than the case 1. So this small margin is bad and this is not optimal hyperplane. Now we are checking case 3. In case 3, we have another hyperplane and with the help of support vectors, the dotted line are created and the distance between support vectors and hyperplane is margin. Here we can see that the margin is very large. As compared to case 1 and 2, case 3 is having largest margin. So this is the good margin. So we can say that this is optimal hyperplane. So SVM identify 
optimal hyperplane that means which is having maximum margin so that it can easily separate class a and class b support vector machine is mainly used for classification problems here we classify different things into classes SVM can also be used for regression problem. Here we predict the things and do the forecast. But SVM is mainly used for the classification problems. There are various applications of support vector machine. Just like face detection, image classification, text classification, handwriting identification and spam detection. Now we are learning types of SVM. The first type is linear SVM. It contain linearly separable data. Here linearly means line. So in linear SVM data points can be divided using single straight line. Just like in the diagram we have class A and class B. They can be divided using a single straight line. So this is linear svm now we are learning the working of linear svm so first of all select the support vectors from each class the data points are selected which are closest to the hyperplane next is create dotted lines these dotted lines are created using the support vectors next is maximize the margin the distance between support vectors and hyperplane is called margin and this margin should be maximum. Now the average line will be hyperplane. Now the average of these two lines which are at maximum margin, this average is called hyperplane. It is also called decision boundary. That is all about linear SVM. The next type of SVM is non-linear SVM. Non-linear SVM contain non-linearly separable data. Here the linear means line. Non-linear means not separated by the line. So here data points cannot be divided using straight line. Here in the diagram we can see that there is class A with the blue data points and there is a class B with orange data points. These two classes cannot be divided using a straight line. So this is non-linear SVM. In non-linear SVM, kernel trick is used to classify data. Here the kernel convert low dimensional space into high dimensional space. If our data points are in one dimension, and they are not linearly separable. So kernel will convert to the next dimension which is second dimension and separate the data points. If our data points are in second dimension and they are not linearly separable. So kernel will convert to the next dimension which is third dimension and it will separate the data points. There are various popular kernels just like polynomial kernel, Gaussian kernel, radial bias function. This is also called RBF and sigmoid kernel. Different kernels are used in different different applications. Now we are learning the working of nonlinear SVM. In nonlinear SVM, the data points are not separated by straight line. So here we use kernel trick. The kernel trick says if data points are not separable in current dimension then add another dimension to separate them. Just like in the diagram we have two dimension space and here we are having the data points which are not linearly separable. So we need to convert 2D to 3D so that they can be separated. The conversion of 1D to 2D and 2D to 3D this is done by kernel and this is called mapping. So first of all we are learning the mapping of 1D to 2D. 
Here in the diagram, we can see that we have only single axis, which is x axis. So this is one dimension space. On this axis, we have data points of two classes. One is class blue and second is class orange. These are not linearly separable. So here we need to apply the kernel trick. That means increasing the dimension. So we are going to the higher dimension. We are converting one dimension to the second dimension. Here in the diagram, we have two axes. One is X axis, another is Y axis. So this is two dimension space. In the second dimension, we can easily separate the data points using the straight line. So using the kernel trick, we are converting one dimension to the second dimension. This is called mapping from 1D to 2D. Now we are learning mapping from 2D to 3D. Here in the diagram, we are having two axes. One is X, another is Y. So this is two dimension space. Here we have two classes. One is class A with blue data points. Another is class B with orange data points. These are not linearly separable. So here we are going to apply the kernel trick. We are going to the higher dimension. From 2D we are going to third dimension. Here in the diagram we are having three axes. One is X, another is Y and next is Z. So this is three dimension space. In third dimension, data points can be easily separated using the plane. So using the kernel trick, we have converted two dimension to the three dimension. This is called mapping from 2D to 3D. So using the kernel trick, we can increase the dimension and separate the data. So that is all about nonlinear SVM. Now we are learning margin in SVM. There are two types of margin in SVM. The first is hard margin and second is soft margin. In hard margin, we are having perfectly linear separable data. Here the class A data and class B data can be easily separated using the hyperplane or decision boundary. In hard margin, the hyperplane has maximum margin. Here the data points are linearly separable. That's why they do not use regularization parameter. Next is soft margin. Here in the diagram we can see that hyperplane is there. But class A few members are just near the decision boundary or hyperplane. And also they are crossing the hyperplane. So this is the misclassified data or noisy data or the data with outlier. In soft margin, data points are not perfectly linear separable. Soft margin can handle noisy data or outlier. Soft margin use regularization parameter. Soft margin tolerate few misclassified data points. Soft margin also balance the trade-off between finding maximize margin and minimize classification. So that is all about the hard margin and soft margin. Now we are learning the advantages of support vector machine. The first is great accuracy. Next is work well with high dimensional space. Next is it use subset of training points so consume less memory. So these are the advantages of SVM. Now we are learning disadvantages. The first is high training time. Next is it is not suitable for large data sets. Next is it do not work well with overlapping classes. So these are the disadvantages of SVM. So that's all for today. Thank you.